thank you board members and staff liaisons for joining us for this boards, commissions and committee outreach meeting. It will start shortly. I would ask if you can please um, rename yourselves uh, with your, your name and the board that you are that you serve on. Maybe uh, for example, Terry Griffin, Board of Community Services. Um, if you can rename yourselves in Zoom, that would be much appreciated. Uh, the meeting will start shortly. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I am going to get started right on time out of respect for everybody's time. Um, we will be ending at 630 hard stop time because I have, have a few people who have some time constraints. So with that said, thank you and welcome. I just want to just say a couple things. Um, we do have interpreter services for this meeting and our Zoom host will explain how that works. 
Um, so Dina, can you please explain to everybody? Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. Uh, you can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon in Zoom. On the toolbar, it looks like a little globe. Um, Xiomara is the interpreter currently on our panelist side of Zoom, and Pablo is interpreting on the Spanish channel. Uh, approximately 45 minutes into this meeting, we'll take a brief break for the interpreters to switch roles. Ziomara, would you please uh, interpret what I just stated so those participating who have not jumped onto the Spanish channel know how to do so? Of course, thank you. Uh, estamos teniendo intérpretes para que usted pueda entender en su idioma nacional español lo que se está diciendo en esta junta de comité de la ciudad de Santa Rosa. Nosotros queremos que sepa que hay un lugar donde usted puede entrar, donde se ve como que es una una vejiga donde puede escoger el canal para escuchar lo que usted necesita escuchar en español. Tenemos dos intérpretes, Pablo y Mara. Uno va a estar interpretando para preguntas y otro va a estar interpretando lo que se está diciendo en esta junta directiva. Okay, thank you, Zilmara. Um, you can mute your microphone and take this as your rest period while Pablo interprets on the Spanish channel. At the end of the work workshop, and as, as much time allows, city clerk, city clerk, pardon me, city clerk Stephanie Williams will open a question and answer session and the interpreter on the panel, panelist side will be prepared to assist anyone needing interpretation. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Schwedholm for a welcome greeting. Great, thank you so much, Dina. And thank you all for attending this. A lot of folks don't realize the amount of services that the city of Santa Rosa provides. What you'll hear from tonight is the 13 different boards, commissions, and committees that help make up and help us, us being the Santa Rosa City Council, accomplish our goals. That's a crucial role that these boards, commissions, and committees play because it's just not the seven of us on the Santa Rosa City Council. What we do is create the goals for each two-year session, but the implementation of that, it requires the fabulous staff that we have here in the city of Santa Rosa and each member and representative on the boards and commissions, more of which would it will you learn more about from the folks today. So I appreciate your interest in them. You will learn things you never knew, you never knew about the city of Santa Rosa should you be selected to participate on this. It's a great way to be, give back to the community. I will be honest with you, the pay's not that great, but the rewards for making a difference in your community are significant. So I appreciate your interest in the city of Santa Rosa. Thank you for attending this session, and I hope you learn a lot and you do fill out that application and do want to become part of the city of Santa Rosa. Thank you, and I'll hand it back to Stephanie or Dina. Thank you, Mayor. So Dina, next slide, please. So we're, I'm just gonna go over really quickly the application process. Uh, next slide. So um, applicants need to be residents of the city of Santa Rosa and you must be a registered voter in the city. Um, you need to be registered voters and reside in the city during the term of your appointment to a board and you will apply online at srcity.org forward slash board. There's a application there that you fill in. And once that is submitted, um, we get an email and we will save it um, to our files so that when council members are ready to make appointments, the newly um, elected council members are ready to make appointments in January, we have a pool of applicants. Um, we also use those applications on file for when a vacancy comes up, if anybody needs to resign due to whatever reason, um, we also will go back to that pool of applicants um, to, for council members to make their appointments. Next slide, please. So we're gonna cover uh, some roles and responsibilities really quickly. So um, you may be, next slide, please. 
So you may be asking what your role is as a board member. And your role as a board member is to assist governing bodies in the decision-making process. Um, a lot of these boards um, will make decisions and recommendations um, to council, to planning commission, um, to adopt uh, resolutions, legislations, general plans. So um, your role on a board is very important. Um, some bodies are mandated by federal or state statute or by the city ordinance or resolution. Um, the Board of Public Utilities and the Community Advisory Board are uh, mandated by our city charter. And um, most boards have a forming resolution and they do adopt their own bylaws. But ultimately the city council has the final responsibility and authority for making policy decisions, but they do make those decisions um, taking into consideration recommend, recommendations by some of the boards um, that um, bring something forward to them. Next slide, please. So what do you do as a um, body member? As I mentioned, each body has a set of bylaws outlining the mission, purpose, and details of the functions that they do, and some include annual lists of goals and objectives. Um, some of the boards, uh, you will serve as advisory bodies, and especially if it's an authority, you work programs, and you have a relationship with the city council as a governing body or a board. And then you're also committed to fulfilling the mission and goals of the advisory body um, that you are sitting on, but also the goals and missions of the city council. So you, you have um, you know, a lot of responsibility to accomplish annual priorities and to help serve in the accomplishment of the goals of the city council. Next slide, please. So as a um, member of a board, you represent the community at large. You, we don't work in silos. You're not, it's not exclusive to one point of view. While you may have your view, you share those on your board um, when your board meets, but you always try and come to a consensus when you're trying to move something forward for recommendation. And you always wanna take the community or the city as a whole into consideration when you are making those decisions. Next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned before, there are some legal requirements. You need to be a resident of City of Santa Rosa and you need to be a registered voter. And that is, um, you must maintain that registration and residency during the term of your appointment. You observe the Brown Act, which is the Open Public Meetings Law, the Political Reform Act, Ethics and Conflict of Interest um, requirements, and the Public Records Act, which we receive a lot of requests for records. Um, you will um, get training, if appointed, you will get training on the Brown Act and what the Political Reform Act means and also um, public records. Um, some advisory bodies are designated in the city's uh, conflict of interest code and are required to file statements of economic interest. Your statement of economic interest is a form 700. It is a public document. And this is where you would disclose anything so that we can see or the public can see that if you have something on an agenda and are making a decision on something in Santa Rosa that you don't have a vested interest in it, and therefore creating a conflict for you to vote on that. So um, those are all very, really um, important things that we um, make sure that all of our board members um, do not um, violate that um, conflict of interest code. So next slide, please. Um, yes, you, you will be provided with training with the city attorney's office and with myself, the city clerk on um, Brown Act, Political Reform Act and Public Records Act. We also will provide ethics training. 
And then you will also have some specialized training and orientation by the staff liaisons and um, chair of the board who will be making presentation shortly. And then ethics training and anti-sexual harassment trainings are required by the city in the springtime. And um, like I said, we will provide some ethics training, but if you can't make it, the Fair Political Practices Commission also has an online training that you can complete. And the anti-sexual harassment training is done through our HR department and we can coordinate that training with new board members. Next slide, please. So this is just a great quote from Martin Luther King. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of ther thermodynamics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. So serving your community is a very important um, job. In fact, it's probably one of the most important positions that um, helps the city run and makes the city run without the um, service of our community members, we couldn't get most of the work done that the city does. So I thank you, the city thanks you for your interest in serving and if you do get appointed in your service. Next slide, please. And again, you can apply at srcity.org forward slash boards. And if you have any questions that, about applying or have any issues about applying, you can certainly email me at swilliams at srcity.org or the deputy city clerk, Dina Manis at dmanis at srcity.org. And that's spelled D-M-A-N-I-S at srcity.org. And now I think I'll turn it over to staff presentations, each of the um, staff liaisons and possibly board chairs will be making presentations and giving information on each of their boards. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, my name is Tara Thompson. I'm the city's arts and culture manager. I oversee the public art program for the city of Santa Rosa and staff the Art in Public Places Committee. Um, the Art in Public Places Committee is the governing body that oversees the city's public art program. The committee advises public art program staff, the city manager and the city council on matters related to the program and advises on policies and goals for the placement and selection of public art as well as ongoing maintenance. Uh, committee members also participate in the selection and approval of public art projects. Uh, right now is an exciting time for the public art program because we're undergoing some strategic planning as well as some crisis response planning in response to our current state of crisis here in the community, including COVID. Um, so our original mission that we're continuing to work under but now revising through this planning process is that the public art program is intended to enrich civic life, give voice to the unique creative spirit of Santa Rosa, and to galvanize the city's reputation as an arts destination. The program integrates a wide range of public art into public space, creating a livable community and con contributing to economic development. So in addition to some strategic planning and crisis planning that we're currently doing, the committee is also working on the selection of the permanent artwork for Courthouse Square, the Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square project, um, as well as we have also been assisting with the Open and Out program on uh, 4th Street and Courthouse Square in downtown Santa Rosa to install temporary art um, within the footprint of that program. So the membership is made up of seven members that are appointed by uh, each council member and members should possess professional experience in the field of visual or public art, um, but uh, could also have experience including environmental design, placemaking, economic development, tourism, or just a background and general interest in the arts. Um, so we encourage you to submit an application. We'd love to have some new members express interest. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things that you could be involved with on this committee. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tara. 
Thank you, Tara. We're going to move along to Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board. We do have Nancy Adams on the line, along with Sean Ralston, the board chair for BPAB. So, Dina, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. This is Nancy Adams, and I my video is saying that's not, I can't access it, so I don't know. Um, oh, that's I don't okay, Nancy. Oh. We can hear Go you ahead. loud and clear. Okay, perfectly. So, so thank you. Um, I am happy to be here this afternoon to share a little bit of, um, with uh, those um, participating in the Zoom meeting about the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board. So um, kind of like Tara, it's, it's a real exciting time for our advisory board for the city. Um, we, we just had the city council approve the, an update of the bicycle and pedestrian master plan um, all a year ago, back in March of 2019. And that is a policy document that's really gonna provide a lot of guidance to um, how we, we are mobile within the city rather than using our, our vehicles. Um, so um, that's, that's, that's a very exciting um, time for us to, to kick off uh, some new policies and some new bike and pedestrian network uh, recommendations that came out of that plan. Um, I will say that the, the board's responsibility, one of them is, is, was, a, was a huge commitment to, to see in this plan um, to um, the finish line, um, getting it to the city council. So it was a, it was a very um, uh, focused effort. And as you can see on the slide, typically the board meets every other month, the third um, Thursday and four to six, um, when we are in, in an actual meeting place, we're, we're out at uh, the Municipal Service Center uh, South building, which is out off of Stony Point Road by the fire station. And during the, the, the process of the plan, um, it was so, it was such a, a huge lift. Um, the board was actually meeting every month for about a year and a half. So it really took a commitment of the board members to, um, to help you know, shepherd this through. So um, as a result of that plan, we, we actually established um, some, some policies that are, um, and some goals that are, we're new to Santa Rosa, um, you know, such as um, looking at our, our mode share, how many people actually do walk and bike in the city and really trying to increase that for, for our community and looking at um, a vision zero, which is trying to reduce the, the number of crashes involving pedestrians and, and cyclists. Um, so we're, we're actually participating in a countywide effort. So um, that, and then there's other initiatives such as bike share, which actually is going to launch in 2021. And that's a, a, a two county effort with Marin County and Sonoma County. And that will put some bike share um, uh, hubs, about four of them within the city, uh, probably two in the, the downtown area and associated with the smart station um, in the downtown and then the smart station up at the, uh, the north end by Cotting Town Mall. So that's another exciting initiative that the city hasn't really um, experienced yet. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot in, um, in the offing. And one of the responsibilities um, that also the board does is they, there's a, a, some state funding that comes uh, to the city and we use that money um, every year to look at where we would um, build, construct or um, design and start building um, bicycle and pedestrian projects. And so, you know, the, the board has a, a strong track record of identifying um, projects for us to work on. Um, and so that's all it's exciting for them to, to get their input on where we actually put this money and, and where it goes within our community to construct these um, bicycle and pedestrian projects. So, um, and then lastly, I would just say some of the, some of the other infrastructure um, projects that are really um, not too far off is, is, a, is a very significant um, bicycle and pedestrian overcrossing. Um, right in the vicinity of the junior college and Cottingtown Mall. And, 
And that just went to the city council, uh, I guess it was in July now, um, as part of the uh, environmental review process. So we are anticipating um, getting our uh, California environmental clearance and our federal environmental clearance by the end of this year. And so we're already starting the design on that process. Um, and we'll certainly kick that off uh, in next year. And that's a, that's a really monumental um, leadership project for, for Santa Rosa in terms of bike and ped um, infrastructure. So that's, that's real exciting. And we also have some uh, corridor studies that we are working on. And this is, this is also something new for us that came out of the plan. And, and it was a result of um, trying to um, identify um, some further design options for some of the um, heavy crash corridors um, for pedestrians and bicyclists. And right now we're evaluating Stony Point Road where there were some significant um, uh, crashes involving uh, bikes and, and, and uh, pedestrians. So, so we have an engineering team that's working on that. And so a lot of exciting things. Um, and I guess I will close with a couple of things. Uh, the, the board structure is, is actually, there are nine members and two of the members are at large. One represents our, our, um, our com community um, of, of, of elderly residents. And the second one is our um, disabled um, representative. And those two are selected at large by uh, the council as, as a whole. And then the other seven members are council member appointees. So, and then I'll add one more thing. And then I think Sean, our, our chair is on. So he may add, add some other things just to tell you how exciting it is. But we do, um, the council did approve uh, an active transportation planner position, which will um, be helping me um, with all the bicycle and pedestrian um, planning and construction activities throughout the city. So we are just in the phases of um, that recruitment and we hope to, to have the, uh, the new position filled um, by the first of next year. So um, a lot of exciting things for us. So I will stop there and, and uh, hand it off to Sean Walston, the chair. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Nancy. Dina, can you hear me? Yes, I can, loud and clear. Thank you very much, Sean. All right, thank you. Um, I just wanted to add, and thank you so much, Nancy. We're just, I'm so grateful that we have an incredible uh, city staff. Uh, for people who are considering uh, the Bike Ped uh, Advisory Board, I really um, want to throw in a pitch. Uh, if you are at all concerned about uh, health, uh, collision reduction in our in our city um, equity of how we can get more people in, in on our roads uh, improving kind of the life quality and helping the environment the bike pedestrian advisory board is really cool it, it's just incredibly gratifying that we get to work uh, with the master plan that Nancy just mentioned uh, and it kind of converges with the city's plan. So we work together and you know, I guess I'm kind of a closet, uh, a closet transportation planner wannabe. I'm not smart enough to be a, a transportation planner, but I, uh, but I really want to be. And, and being a part of the bike pedestrian advisory board really lets you, um, uh, do some outreach, get your fingers involved in, in actual planning, and then with a great support of staff, it's terrific. Um, we were instrumental in being able to get the city designated as a bike-friendly city from the League of American Cyclists um, based on a lot of the work that the city staff has done. You know, and our, our goal at the end, if you just take a look back at the big picture, is just, you know, if we can increase access um, for site for cyclists and for pedestrians maintain the network we have and expand it and just support a cultural change it's one of the most gratifying uh, things to, to do we've actually uh, made recommendations to the Santa Rosa City Council on green bike lanes and it's just fascinating to be part of government to see that you can actually make a suggestion get something implemented, and then it really happens. Um, so I'm just grateful for the incredible staff and, and we're looking for some good people and we're really a friendly bunch. So uh, the invitation is open and I hope you apply. Thank you, Sean. We are going to move along to the Board of Community Services and we will be having Jen Santos come on for 
uh, making that presentation. Let me just promote her to a panelist. And Terry Griffin, the Board of Community Services Chair. Hi, Dina, can you hear me? I can, thank you, Jen. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Jen Santos, Deputy Director for uh, Parks, and I am also the liaison to our fantastic Board of Community Services. They're a seven member advisory board appointed by council. And we meet the fourth Wednesday of every month at four o'clock. And I'm really excited that we'll be starting our first virtual meeting uh, next Wednesday, the uh, 28th of October at four o'clock. Um, I also wanted to note that I am joined tonight by um, our chair, Terry Griffin, and uh, potentially was supposed to be joining also Vice Chair Quant. So they are available for questions as well. Uh, the board reviews city recreational and cultural policies, facilities and programs. They advise the city council on their adequacy and effectiveness. They advise council on matters relating to community beautification and many of these things intersect with what Rec and Parks does. Uh, the board also assists staff in the formulation of rules and regulations for the use of city parks and recreational facilities. And uh, one really great thing about this board is they're very active in the community and they get out and attend uh, community meetings we have, park dedications. Uh, they're very active in our parks and they're very knowledgeable about the park system, which is really great when they are um, hearing things that come before the board. It's really great to have that background. Um, I wanted to highlight some of the things that they've worked on over the most the last couple of years. Um, in, in, as in our recreation field, they have assisted with the uh, decision making about whether or not to convert a tennis court at Finley Park to four pickleball courts and the striping of one pickleball court um, or one tennis court to, uh, um, to be both pickle and tennis. Uh, this was really controversial and if any of you know anything about pickleball, it, it's, it's a really uh, popular sport. Um, nationwide, and it, it's no different here in Santa Rosa. Uh, ultimately, this board heard both sides and a lot of information um, was presented to them. They visited the park, um, they got to know all about pickleball, and they ultimately recommended the conversions. Um, the board also has provided feedback on golf course and greens fees, recreation fees, such as pool entrance fees, um, they provide recommendations uh, for council approval of park master plans and improvement plans and uh, provide feedback regarding operations for recreation of park related projects. Um, they, are, um, they are very active in our community, as I mentioned. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in recreation of parks and um, the associated projects with those. We often have art projects in our pro in our in our projects and they are heavily involved. It's a great board to be part of. Uh, we do currently have one vacancy, so I hope that we get some interest tonight. And um, I also, yeah, so I just wanted to also remind everyone that the chair and vice chair are also here tonight. Thank you. Chair or vice chair, did you have anything to add for the Board of Community Services? Terrific, thank you, Jen, Carol, and Terry. We're going to move along to uh, the Board of Building Regulation Appeals. Joining us for the Board of Building Regulation Appeals is Jesse Oswald, our Chief Building Inspector. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, I can, thank you, Jesse. Hi, this is Jesse Oswald, Chief Building Official with the City of Santa Rosa. Uh, the Board of Building Regulation Appeals with the acronym BOBRA uh, is made up of seven members and their qualifications range 
from the uh, potential of being a contractor, structural or civil engineer, uh, or uh, an architect, electrical engineer, electrical contractor, mechanical engineer or mechanical contractor or a plumbing contractor. And the purpose of the, the Board of Building Regulations Appeals is to provide the opportunity for uh, any decisions made by the building official or the deputies uh, with regard to uh, orders, decisions, or determinations made by the, the division, uh, new, as well as uh, additional um, implications from the property maintenance code, which is uh, enforced by the code enforcement division. So the board holds a really important um, feature for allowing uh, public process and any, any orders or interpretations or, or notices by the division. And we currently do have two vacancies. So it'd be uh, wonderful to have community members with an interest in the code uh, regulation arena to serve and provide their, their uh, knowledge and input into the processes as they move forward. We're a very fortunate board in that uh, the members uh, all take the codes uh, very seriously and enjoy uh, rendering uh, interpretations, fair and, and equitable interpretations uh, for, for the, 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 the good of the community and the safety of the community is really what it is, is based upon. So um, with that, I hope to uh, gain some interest and uh, we are required to have at least one meeting per, per year annually. And we are scheduled quarterly to have meetings on the second Thursday uh, in a quarterly basis. And so with that, I hope to gain some interest from folks in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. We're going to move along to the Board of Public Utilities. Joining us for the Board of Public Utilities is Jennifer Burke and BPU Chair Dan Galvin. And just a reminder, if you'd like to apply for any of these boards that we're discussing tonight, please go to srcity.org forward slash boards. Thank you, Jen, or Jennifer. Thank you, Dina, and good evening. I'm here to talk about the Board of Public Utilities, or BPU. My name is Jennifer Burke, and I'm the Director of the City's Water Department. The Board of Public Utilities is a seven-member board that is appointed by city council members. Uh, the board is an exciting and hardworking board with a lot of authority that provides general policy direction and guidance over the operation and management of the city's water and sewer utilities, as well as the Laguna wastewater treatment plant. The board reviews and approves policies and procedures for the department establishes and recommends the approval of rates, fees, and the annual budget for the department, awards capital improvement projects and contracts for the department, and can also negotiate uh, property acquisitions, rents, and leases for property needed for the business of the city utility. Some exciting current and uh, prospective projects that the board is currently work working on includes uh, our four year rate setting process. So we're in the middle of starting that. Uh, our upcoming budget, long range water planning, uh, a recommendation for a sale of $70 million worth of bonds uh, that the council will be considering soon to replace our UV disinfection system. So just to name a few of, of the exciting projects that they're working on. Uh, the BPU uh, members uh, meet on the first and third Thursday of the month at 1.30. Uh, typically we would meet in the city council chambers. Uh, during this time we've been meeting virtually and it is very uh, consistent that we meet every first and third Thursday of the month as there's a lot of business for the water department. So if you are at all interested in the water, sewer, or wastewater treatment, uh, please consider joining the Board of Public Utilities. And Dan Galvin, our chair, is also on and available for questions uh, when the time comes for questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. The next board we're going to hear from is our Community Advisory Board. 
And that staff liaison is Danielle Garduño. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle Garduño, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for the City of Santa Rosa and the Staff Liaison to the Community Advisory Board, also known as the CAB. The CAB uh, is a 14-member board with seven area seats and seven at-large seats. We currently have two at-large seats open. And the mission of the CAB is to connect city government and residents so that the public can have a voice in the decisions that impact their lives to build a stronger community. Um, in 2018, the CAB passed a strategic plan or adopted a strategic plan um, and their work focuses in two areas. One is the capacity building and training area, which our expertise subcommittee um, uh, works on and they work are currently working on developing an orientation process for the cab uh, training areas for the cab and um, they also uh, recently developed some recruitment materials um, that are useful for our city council members when they're looking at um, interested applicants. Um, our empowerment subcommittee is our community engagement arm of the cab. Um, and they have been working um, on implementing our NeighborFest program in a variety of different neighborhoods throughout the city. Um, they are working on developing a citizen engagement academy and also currently assisting the community engagement office in developing a series of civic engagement 101 videos. Um, they are also um, actively engaging with our uh, neighborhood groups throughout the city, although right now um, during COVID, um, they haven't been able to do so as um, many of our neighborhood groups are not meeting in person. Although if you are meeting virtually, we'd like to know about that so that we can continue uh, relationship building with our neighborhoods. In addition to that work, uh, the CAB uh, during non-COVID times also uh, attends many uh, community events such as the Wednesday at Market, Cinco de Mayo, the ML Okay, Juneteenth event, and they table at those events, providing information to our residents about various community, or I'm sorry, city projects, um, as well as um, community engagement opportunities that are available um, to our residents. Uh, we meet the fourth Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. Uh, usually we meet at our, um, at our uh, uh, first street location at 6 37 First Street. However, uh, due to the pandemic, we're meeting virtually. The next meeting is on October 28th, next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Um, we invite everyone to attend and participate. Um, and if you want more information about the CAB, we have um, information such as our current members um, and uh, additional information on the strategic plan at srcity.org slash CAB. And I will be around for questions should you have any. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Next, we're gonna to move to the Cultural Heritage Board and our staff liaison is Susie Murray. Hi, everybody, can you hear me? We can hear you, thank you, Susie. Yay. So my name is Susie Murray and I've worked for the city since 2006. I'm now a senior planner for the Planning and Economic Development Division and I'm also uh, recently appointed as the CHB board liaison. Actually, that happened just before the pandemic. So we haven't had a whole lot of activity until just recently. Being a new position. Unfortunately, it looks like we lost Susie. So let me see if I can get her back one moment. Susie, it looks like somehow you got disconnected, but got bumped, but now you're back. Are you? It happened earlier too. So I'm going to try and just cruise through this as fast as I can. Thank and you. Um, let's see. What I wanted to say is that it's always interesting 
It's sometimes challenging. And board members on the CHB are a group of really great people. I also am gonna throw in a plug. We're looking for a seventh person right now. So submit your applications. So far, I'll say that I am, for the most part, loving it. So part of the, the staff, I wanted to let you know that, you know, when you're, when you're up there and you're looking at projects, you're not alone. We have, not only do you have me, the board liaison, but you'd also have the staff planner who can answer most of the questions, but there are some complex projects. And in those cases, we keep, uh, we'll have a city attorney present to answer your questions. We'll also have other relevant staff as needed, transportation, traffic, um, gosh, engineering and development services, water, you name it. So the charge of the board is really um, balancing the uh, preservation of our historic resources and citywide goals with a focus primarily on the preservation of those historic resources. Um, before a project comes to the board, staff conducts a complete analysis and you'll get to review their work along with, along with the project materials. <clears throat> staff, staff will make a presentation at each one of the meetings and you'll hear phrases like pursuant to and in compliance with, but then your conversations begin and that's when it gets really interesting. So reviewing projects against the, the Secretary of the Interior Standards and um, uh, th those are, that's kind of a, I, I guess it's a federal uh, document actually, and then um, comparing those to some city documents like our zoning code and historic uh, or uh, processing procedures for the owners of historic properties. Again, staff will do an analysis, so you'll get to see all that. From my perspective, what is probably the most important thing is your commitment, your time commitment. The Cultural Heritage Board meets two days a month typically, okay, let's say, I say typically because we do have some special meetings. Because typically it's the first and third Wednesday of every month. Um, sometimes we have to conduct other joint public meetings or hearings um, and we, we team up with our design review board. Um, those meetings can happen in addition to your Wednesday night meetings. The other thing is sometimes you'll have a real complex project and that Wednesday night meeting that, that or the Wednesday meeting actually starts at 2.30 in the afternoon, but those nighttime meetings sometimes begin at five and they've been known to go into the wee hours of the morning. That's not the normal, but it does happen. So you need to be prepared for that. So um, the other thing that would be nice is to have some, some related, uh, professional or personal um, uh, association with preservation, whether it's, you know, uh, um, a historic um, architect or, I don't want to throw words like architect out, but some sort of understanding of preservation is real important. So as far as training is concerned, um, well, I'm going to say it's a lot of it's on the job, other than some of those trainings that Stephanie mentioned earlier. And I'm going to defer now to the board chair, Brian Muser, who's also, um, I'm hoping he's been elevated as well. Are you, are you all able to see Brian Muser? I've just promoted him under the name of Lisa Kranz. Got it. <laughs> um, so Lisa, Brian, if you can unmute yourself, there's a familiar face. Um, if you have anything to add to Susie's presentation, that would be wonderful. Okay, yeah, I won't uh, repeat. Uh, Susie kind of covered a lot of the notes that I had. Um, I, I will say that um, we have, the city of Santa Rosa has eight historic districts and uh, additionally uh, some landmarks. And it also has a future of potential other historic districts and other landmarks. And uh, the challenge of the Cultural Heritage Board is basically kind of in a nutshell to act on the public's behalf to identify and support the preservation districts. And, um, but it can be kind of a, a, a gray line in that 
each of these districts at one time or another are going to have an alteration, a development, a demolition, a rehabilitation, or a restoration. And uh, sometimes those can be viewed as good, and sometimes they can be viewed as, as not good. And uh, uh, from the historic neighborhoods perspective, it, it could be either way. And from the city's perspective, it could be either way. So that's why we have a seven member board. Uh, if it was just so cut and dry, if we were just gonna follow the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation, um, if we were just gonna follow the zoning code, um, then the planners could, could do that um, without having a board. But it's, a, it's, 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 it's gray, it's dynamic. Um, we have to weigh the needs of historic preservation with the needs of the city, um, with taking into consideration what what policy, what codes are, and uh, and and what the general public feels about um, the item that that we're dealing with. So um, this is my second go around on the cultural heritage board. I was on the cultural heritage board in the late '90s. Um, I'm a new chair to the cultural heritage board. Uh, actually, as well as a new new member. Um, I'm enjoying it very much. Um, I do want to though, um, Susie already said this, but I, I do want to um, uh, reemphasize how important it is though um, for you if you choose to be on the board to make the commitment to attendance, to being prepared for agenda items Staff is wonderful. Uh, they will spend time with you prior to a meeting if you have questions, because sometimes these things can be complicated. Um, I'm fortunate, I'm married to a city planner, so I can get a lot of information from her. But uh, um, yeah, so anyway, I know you got a lot of board school. So we do have a vacancy and, and we're looking forward to some special person coming and filling it. Thank you. Thank you, Susie and Brian. We're going to take a brief moment to do uh, the transition for the interpreters to swap roles. So bear with us. That has to happen live. Uh, we cannot throw up an intermission slide. So one moment, please. Um, just real quick while we take this break, I just want to say that um, if anybody has any questions that we can't get through to tonight, you can always email me at swilliams at srcity.org and I can forward those questions to the appropriate um, staff liaison um, to get an answer for you. Yomara, I'm just going to ask you to turn on your camera briefly and give me a thumbs up that you are now participating on the Spanish channel. Thank you, Ziomara. And Pablo, can you just do a quick mic check and confirm you are on the panelist side? Testing, this is Pablo, interpreter. Thank you very much, Pablo. We are going to move along with the next board and that is going to be the design review board. Joining us from the giant, uh, the design review board is Bill Rose 
and the Design Review Board Chair. Thank you, Dina, and good evening, everybody. My name is Bill Rose. I am the Interim Deputy Director of Planning and also the Staff Liaison to the Design Review Board. Um, I'm going to give a quick overview of the Design Review Board, its composition, and its purpose, and then I'll turn it over to Scott Kincaid. He's the current chairman of the Design Review Board. So the Design Review Board, or commonly it's referred to as the DRB, is made up of seven members, each appointed by a city council member. The chair of the Design Review Board is appointed by the mayor, and the vice chair is selected amongst the Design Review Board itself. The board meets on the first and third Thursday of every month. It's had a fairly full slate of projects for some time now. Uh, we don't see any let up. The pipeline of projects has been pretty full and it continues to be that way uh, in, the, in the future. Um, the board is uh, typically made up of professionals from the design and development community. So often we will have uh, one or more licensed architects. Uh, we also could have draft person, professionals on the board, uh, landscape architects, uh, anybody that is somehow related to, as I said, the design or the development community. But it's not just architects um, or landscape professionals. We can have engineers. We've had civil engineers. We've had structural engineers. Um, and we've had real estate professionals, uh, real estate finance professionals. And we've even had the benefit of public safety professionals on the board. So it's a, a pretty diverse mix. Um, the design review board agendas, um, as I mentioned, they're pretty full uh, and each item is pretty detailed. So the staff planner will bring forward a project with a staff report, a presentation and a full analysis. Um, and it will culminate with a staff recommendation and the board then takes action. And as uh, Chairman Muser mentioned a moment ago with the Cultural Heritage Board, the distinction with the Design Review Board and the Cultural Heritage Board, you'll hear momentarily the Planning Commission, is the exercise of discretion. So the, that's often the gray area. It's where there's not necessarily a specific provision, but it's where the board looks for things like compatibility or the appropriateness of a project. And what the Design Review Board does is it's exactly what it says. It's the board in charge with reviewing the design of projects, the architecture, the site plan, the layout, and its uh, appropriateness. Uh, one thing I also wanted to mention is the, the commitment of time. So there are two meetings per month. There can be special meetings. Uh, those are fairly infrequent, but the packets themselves, as I mentioned earlier, uh, can be fairly detailed. So there is a, a time commitment that each board member definitely puts into this. And I think you'll hear more from the chairman in just a second. Uh, the staff is definitely involved, so you will always have a liaison. That's usually me or somebody uh, on my behalf. We also have an administrative staff that can help out, and we're very accessible. We want to make sure that the meetings are meaningful, that you understand all of the information, um, and all your questions are answered, hopefully ahead of time, so there's no surprises at the meetings. The meetings right now are virtual. They're uh, typically held at City Hall, but right now it's in the virtual environment. Uh, they are also televised as well. The uh, board members often do site visits in advance of the meetings as well to better understand, understand the project uh, before them. So um, we're always looking for diversity on the board. The city is, also, is now uh, uh, governed by district elections. So we have different uh, geographic political districts. So we seek to have people from um, all over the city and as I mentioned, from a range of different uh, professional disciplines. So with that, I think I'll turn it over to Scott Kincaid to give a little feedback from his role as a longstanding board member and also as our current chairman. Thank you, Bill. Can everybody hear me all right? Okay. Um, so I'm Scott Kincaid, current board chair of the Design Review Board, as Bill mentioned. Um, I am a commercial general contractor, which was one of the areas that Bill did not mention, but still a real estate professional. And I think we all bring our uh, unique perspectives to uh, those gray areas, those uh, design guideline um, interpretations. And really it's a collaborative approach uh, to achieving uh, what is boiled down to superior design. 
So the city of Santa Rosa requires superior design in, in all of its projects that are reviewed by the design review board. And really, uh, when I say it's a collaborative approach, uh, we are all appointed uh, by various uh, count city council members and those city council members come up with collective priorities and uh, we are seated to make sure that those uh, priorities are seen through uh, in the development process. Um, as has been previously mentioned by several other um, board chairs, uh, the city staff is absolutely fantastic. Uh, they do offer a tremendous amount of support in all areas so that you're making informed decisions. Um, the applicant team and their design team uh, are part of the collaborative process uh, along with the board. Um, and the public also gets to provide input and um, you'd be surprised that the public comes out for things that are on the docket in their neighborhood. So it's always good to hear what they want. Uh, and you weigh all those things against uh, lots of different documents that uh, give you insight on how the city wants to develop and, and see its future. So you really do get to have an impact on uh, the development of the city, uh, what it looks like in the future and um, collaborate with uh, other individuals with similar interests. Um, I'd really recommend uh, that you apply for the design review board if you are interested in seeing the city develop. It is a very exciting time, lots of mid-rise developments in the downtown area. And uh, we continue to see some unique projects that uh, really haven't been seen too much in the city of Santa Rosa in general. So uh, here to answer any questions you might have along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Scott. We're going to move along to the Housing Authority with uh, the Health and Community Services Director, David Gwine on the line. Yes, hi everybody. It shows I'm unmuted, so I think I'm good. I can hear you loud and clear, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dina. So yeah, if you're out there and you're interested in helping people obtain affordable housing, then you may want to consider applying for a seat to the Santa Rosa Housing Authority. The Housing Authority's vision is that we believe that all people, regardless of income level, have the right to live in affordable, safe, and healthy homes. It's basically a seven member commission, two of which are tenant commissioners. That is they're recipients of our program to comprise the full seven member body. We look for members who have knowledge or an interest of residential finance, the development process with its many challenges and the rental housing business basically. Housing Authority meets once a month in council chambers, meetings are recorded and so the last few meetings have been virtual, but you may want to go back and look at past meetings to get a flavor of the business that comes before this body, which is along these the following two primary lines. So the Housing Authority focuses on first, the Housing Choice Voucher Program. That's also known as Section 8. It's a federal uh, resource where we act as the federal contractor for Santa Rosa. We assist 2,000 families staying here in Santa Rosa with help providing uh, assistance with their rent payment. And it's, it, there's several products in the voucher program. There's a portable voucher. That is where the voucher is assigned to the low income family and they can go live anywhere they can, find a place and we help them with the rent. There's also where we project base a voucher. This is then a voucher assigned to a particular development that assists in its, uh, its financing to get built. And then there's a slew of products for veterans, homeless veterans, uh, low-income veterans, things of that nature. So that's the Housing Choice Voucher Program, but that's one big focus of the Housing Authority. The second big focus is the Santa Rosa Housing Trust. And this is where we take any resource we can obtain from federal, state, or local, including our city council, and we put it towards affordable housing production, rehabilitation, home ownership programs, and what we call special needs facilities, such as homeless shelters. The Santa Rosa Housing Trust has a portfolio size of over $120 million. There's over 4,000 units in the portfolio and roughly $5 million annually, we distribute through a notice of funding availability process. Notice of funding availability or NOFA. So this is where you would help us decide and partner with us 
and how we allocate this resource to developers to get housing built or rehabilitated as soon as possible. And it would be an exciting time to consider joining the Housing Authority. We are currently in the process of soliciting proposals for roughly $38.5 million in disaster recovery to help Santa Rosa get uh, uh, recover from the 2017 uh, Tubbs fire. And that process is underway. It will be vetted into the early part of the calendar year 2020, 2021, excuse me. And so if you're interested in being part of that discussion, I would urge you to apply as well. So that's a quick review of the Housing Authority. Maybe later on, if there's questions and answers, I can be a resource. Thank you. Thank you, David. We are going to move along to the Measure O Citizens Oversight Board. Uh, joining us is uh, Finance Department Staff Liaison Shelley Riley and Ellen Bailey, the Measure O Chair, is available if um, Shelley calls her up. Shelley, to you. Thanks, Dina. Um, the Measure O Citizens Oversight Committee is made up of seven members appointed by City Council. The purpose of the committee is to annually review the expenditures and appropriations of the Measure O sales tax to ensure that all the revenues are spent in accordance with the ordinance. Um, the sales tax revenue generated is allocated to the police department, 20%, fire department, 20%, and, oh, I'm sorry, police department, 40%, fire department, 40%, and violence prevention, 20%. Um, we have meetings twice a year, so not as much as most committees. Um, they're usually in the afternoons. Um, the first meeting is in the fall to review and approve the Measure O annual report. And the second meeting is in the spring to go over the proposed Measure O budget. Um, both of these items are approved by the Oversight Committee before going to City Council for final approval. Um, if a Measure O department determines that they want to change their implementation plan, or also known as their spending plan, then we could meet again um, and review and approve any changes. Usually we like to do this with the budget, but it does happen every now and again that we will have an occasional extra meeting. Um, and that plan is approved also before it goes to the City Council. Um, right now, our next meeting is on Monday, November 2nd at 4 o'clock. It will be virtual. Um, currently, we are filled with all seven members, um, but that can change at any time. So if you're interested, I encourage anyone to attend the meeting. It will be virtual. That is all I had. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Shelley. I think you covered it. If anyone has any questions, I'll be here to try to help answer them. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Ellen. We are going to move on to the personnel board. Uh, Human Resources Director Amy Reeve is on the line. Hi, Amy. Thank you. Hi. Good evening. I'm Amy Reeve, the Director of Human Resources for the City of Santa Rosa and the Staff Liaison to the Personnel Board. The Personnel Board meets as needed to hear employee grievances and employee discipline that is appealed. There are five members on the board. Two are recommended by employee union groups and three are at large. They serve staggered four-year terms. Board members must live in the city and cannot be a signatory of a current employment contract or memorandum of understanding. There are two terms ending December 31st, 2020, and those two seats will be up for reappointment with incumbents who may elect a second term. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. We're going to move right along into the Planning Commission. Joining us for the Planning Commission is Chair Patty Sisko and Vice Chair Karen Weeks. Patty, Patty I, see I see you. you. Okay, and I'm and just I'm bringing just... Um, Karen right now. Okay, and I, I believe Andrew Triple is present also as the staff liaison. Thank you. He's coming right up. Okay, great.
All right, Andrew, Karen, Patty, please take it away. Andrew gonna start? I'm not. Okay, there we go. Is that better? Yes, yeah. yeah, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Good to see you. Great, thank you. Well, uh, it's great to be here this evening and uh, I just have a few brief comments and then I'll turn it over to uh, Chair Cisco. So uh, I'm the acting supervising planner for current planning at the city of Santa Rosa and I serve as staff liaison to the planning commission, which is a sub and member board that meets uh, twice a month. So I support the planning staff through uh, supervising daily work activities and project assignments. I interact with community members and land use professionals and then I coordinate with other planning managers and board liaisons, including Susie at the Cultural Heritage Board, Bill at the Design Review Board, and uh, Amy with the Waterways Advisory Committee. I've been presenting to planning commission since I joined the city in 2016, uh, but I've only recently began to serve the board as its staff liaison. If you are an acquaintance has said, why are they building a shopping center on that corner? That's an egregious mistake. Who approved that land use? You might be talking about a planning commission land use decision that was made by planning commissioners. And I'm sure Patty will have some great examples of uh, some of those decisions uh, that she can share with you this evening. But through its discretionary decisions and recommendations to city council, the planning commission implements the city zoning code and city council, council policies related to land use planning matters. For commissioners, there can be a bit of reading, site visits, and I think from my impression, considerable reflection. But it's also fascinating to learn how the land use patterns that shape our communities and shape us are not arbitrary or capricious. In fact, they're governed by policies and regulations that support how we want to live as a community in Santa Rosa. I think it's important uh, to be a, a good and effective planning commissioner that you do believe that through meaningful, effective land use planning, we can create opportunities for sustainable, thriving, and equitable community development uh, throughout our city. So now I want to uh, go ahead and turn it over to Chair Cisco. Um, I have the great honor of introducing her. In December, uh, Patty will complete 19 years of service on the Planning Commission. That is an incredible amount of dedication and time that's been given to our city. And, I, and believe me, she is a passionate chair and planning commissioner. She's also chaired the commission for the last nine years. And I think in that role as chair of the commission has really led uh, the planning commission to be one of our most dynamic um, and, and important boards in the city that does a tremendous job um, of exercising its decision-making responsibilities. So with that, Patty, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to you and Karen. So I think I'm on, but um, thank you, Andrew. That's, <laughs> that's so lovely. <laughs> um, and I'll try not to repeat too much of what um, Andrew has said here, but um, the role of the Planning Commission generally is to review our city development projects and conduct public hearings um, to obtain input from the public. There are certain instances where the, the Planning Commission is the final decision maker. And then there are most instances where we're recommending uh, um, approval or denial up to the city council. Our documents uh, are primarily the general plan uh, our specific plans, the zoning code, although we do take information from our master plans like the, the bike and ped master plan, the waterways uh, master plan. Uh, we get input from both the design review board and cultural heritage board for particular uh, projects. Uh, it's the responsibility is to really become familiar with those documents and really familiar with council goals because our role is to uh, review these uh, whatever projects come along uh, potential ordinances potential amendments to our zoning code or general plan uh, 
to review them and interpret them and in terms of their uh, compatibility with existing policies and primor primarily how these uh, types of projects might be furthering the council's goals. And with that in mind, uh, obviously uh, the uh, meeting information is up there. We do meet twice a month. Uh, attendance is critical as both um, uh, Bill Rose and Susie Murray uh, have indicated for the boards. There are no unimportant meetings. Uh, we really uh, need that commitment for attendance. At times we have special meetings uh, or um, meetings, uh, joint meetings with the city council uh, that can occur at different times in the afternoon. So it's really important if you wanna be on the planning commission that you're prepared to make the, the kind of commitment that is necessary in terms of time. It's really helpful to love to read because you will be reading a lot. Uh, we get our, our packet with our agenda items, an extensive staff report, analyzing and making a recommendation. There are environmental documents, traffic studies, parking studies. Uh, there's a lot of reading. And it, it, although you don't have to be an attorney, uh, it does help to have some comfort level with legalese. Uh, the, the, the learning curve is a bit steep, but it's obviously, <laughs> it's very satisfying work. Um, it, we have an amazing staff here. Uh, it is so satisfying to see how the city takes shape. When I began, I never heard of a general plan. Uh, what, what brought me to the planning commission was a project in my own neighborhood. And from there, I got completely fascinated with that document and how the city takes shape or plans for a future some 20 years out. So to me, it's, it's a wonderful experience to see the pieces of the puzzle go together, shift, change. Again, a really primary role is to uh, conduct these public hearings and public uh, education is, is a really critical piece of what we do at, during the hearings. Um, no comment is, uh, left to be unimportant. They're all addressed. Uh, what we really want to do is hear from the public, have the public understand our thinking in interpreting the policies that exist. We don't make policy on the fly. Uh, and to make sure that their, their questions are fully answered and uh, attended to during our hearings. So uh, definitely some meetings are more controversial than others. Uh, that can be uh, challenging, but again, for me, it's just been so fun uh, to, to see both sides of a situation in the controversy, uh, to meet with the public. At, at times, uh, in addition to your uh, conducting the public hearing or being present in the public hearing, you may be asked to meet with a de developer so that he can further, he or she can further explain their project. You might be uh, asked to meet with members of the public. Uh, you should be prepared to make site visits because there's nothing like really on the ground uh, seeing what a project looks like and where it may fit as opposed to a map that you would get with, with your packet. Um, again, I think there's just an amazing staff uh, in planning and economic development and the opportunity to interact with them and to interact with other board members uh, on the planning commission, as well as all of these boards here. I'm, I'm just so impressed whenever we do this as to how much work is getting done in the city by so many really committed volunteers. Um, I would recommend that if you are interested that you you watch a current planning commission meeting or you go back and watch some of the videos, you know, pick, pick some of the more controversial ones like SAY, <laughs> for instance, and see how, uh, how the commission looks in the room of the, the council chambers. The, the virtual method, uh, I don't think we're, it's got quite the same uh, feeling to it. So um, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to be a part of how this city grows and develops. And um, so if you're interested, please apply. Thank you, Patty and Andrew. We are going to move along to the final board of the evening, the Waterways Advisory Committee. Joining us from the Waterways Advisory Committee is 
uh, Amy Lyle from our Planning and Economic Development Department and Art Dyke with the board. Good evening. Thanks all for being here. Uh, my name is Amy Lyle and I am staff liaison to the Waterways Advisory Committee, um, commonly referred to as WAC. And um, I'll let Art talk more. Um, I think you guys have heard a lot about how our boards and commissions operate and the Waterways Committee operates in a very similar fashion. Um, at this time, we do not have any vacancies, but of course that can change any time. Um, but the Waterways Advisory Committee is an interesting mix because it is looking at development and policies in both design, but also there's a lot of environmental science included. So you get to work a lot with our water department, with um, parks. Um, so it's very multidisciplinary. And so I think that's a really key factor in this committee. Um, and it's been really exciting to kind of watch um, the committee function um, there's really great support from our admin team and, and we will train anyone to um, be successful on any of our committees. And so um, with that, I'll just turn it over to Art to talk about his experience on the committee. All right, thank you, Amy. Can, can you guys hear me? Am I being heard? Okay. Um, as, as Amy said, we're kind of a, an exciting board um, because of, uh, our focus is really on our city creeks and waterways. We have a, a master plan. It's called the Santa Rosa Citywide Creek Master Plan. It's a 270 page document, but don't let that intimidate you. It's got a lot of pictures and graphs and stuff like that, but it, but it really provides um, our, our main guidance document for how we look at projects that come across us. Um, our, our vision is kind of, I don't know if any of the other boards have a vision that's kind of like ours, but I'm going to read it because I think it's so cool. Um, the Santa Rosa Creeks are a vital central focus of the community, a place where fish, plants, animals thrive, a place where children can play safely and where busy adults relax, a place where people walk, jog, and ride bicycles and horses, a place where recreation, shopping, and dining merge and flourish, and a place where residents gather for celebrations, entertainment, and to learn about their environment. So, so our, our uh, committee is tasked with protecting that. Um, and so if sometimes a project um, will be developed that's close to, to the creek or within um, a proximity of the creek where our poli the policies of the master plan will dig in and then we'll take a look at that. Um, what we'll do, not like the planning commission, as Patty told you, where there's a whole bunch of documents that have to be reviewed, we'll get a tailored package from the staff that's focused mainly on the impacts or potential impacts to the creek. And and then we'll, we'll get that before we meet. And then, and then sometimes uh, a lot of us will make uh, site visits so we can get familiar with the areas that are being changed or, or modified or planned to be changed. And some of them are, are simply, they wanna put a fence in that's gonna be in the setback of the waterway. Sometimes it's a parking lot. Um, sometimes um, it's a microwave tower or some various things where, that are gonna be impacted. And our, our goal, is to preserve the creek, but also to find ways to allow the development. And so we interact with the developer, we interact with staff. And since we're an advisory committee, we collaborate amongst ourselves. We provide recommendations to staff for staff to, to examine those and look at those. And then sometimes a developer will see, okay, well, maybe we do need to change the, the fencing to make it more accessible. Um, maybe we do need to pull back a little bit and there's changes that we made and sometimes these projects will come back to us. Um, the, the goals of, of this committee, um, I've got the master plan in front of me and I'm just scrolling to it, is we, we look at the habitat of the creeks. We look at how stormwater flows. We look at the economic value of of the of the property in the creek. We we look at the open space. We look at the recreational aspects of it, like trail corridors. Um, there's educational opportunities, aesthetics, the water quality, um, property rights. Private property rights are important. Health and safety and cultural resources. So there's a lot of 
really wonderful things that this committee looks at to um, to achieve the goals to make the city of Santa Rosa a much better place to, to live and to work in and to visit. Um, I, I'd like to add that everybody that lives in Santa Rosa lives in a creek watershed. Um, and so creeks are really part of our community. And we're really fortunate that we have a lot of signage out there. Um, so when you're driving on the road, you'll see a sign and it tells you what the name of the creek is. And, and that gives you an idea of what the watershed is and you know which is part of your community, part of your neighborhood. And, and that really makes it um, nice. So we're a, we're a seven member committee. Um, we have four at large citizens. I'm one of the at large citizens. And then we have uh, members that are from the Design Review Board, the Planning Commission, and the Board of Community Services. We meet um, quarterly or once a month, depending on when the projects come through. And we have we sometimes have fun field trips to go look at things like uh, the Colgan Creek restoration that's going on, or or we'll go out um, to look at something that's very specific to a project that we're having a hard time visualizing and understanding. Um, so. That's that's kind of it. As Amy said, we don't have any vacancies right now, but there there are vacancies that are coming up on the Design Review Board, Planning Commission, and Board of Community Services. So that if you actually went on those, and then you might be able to move into this committee you're interested. Otherwise, we're here until December of 2021. So welcome anyone that wants to join to be part of, or just come out as a community. To our all our meetings are public, and come out and and join in the discussion. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you staff, uh, liaisons, board chairs, board co-chairs, and everybody who presented. Um, I do want to say that um, while some boards may not have current vacancies, there will be significant vacancies with um, uh, terms ending on December 31st, 2020. And so we encourage you to apply so that we can create a pool for the new um, elected council members to make appointments and uh, sitting council members to make reappointments or appoint new appointments to those boards. So we have a few minutes left for questions to the boards and commissions chairs. So if you have a question, please raise your hand using Zoom by hitting star nine and the meeting host will call on you if you have any questions. Again, you can apply um, for a board at, by going to our website at srcity.org forward slash boards and you will see a link to the online application to submit to the city of Santa Rosa. Do we have anybody who has uh, their hand raised? Do you know? No, uh, Stephanie, no, there are no hands raised, although there was one question posed in the Q&A earlier. Did you want to read the response from city attorney on that yes, question? Yes, um, we did have a question asked if the city indemnifies board members, and they do in the scope and business of their work on the board. So, um, if that was a question or a concern for anybody, the city does indemnify um, members just in the scope and work that they do for the board. All right, Stephanie, I'm not seeing any additional hands being raised from the attendee side. Well, thank you again, everybody, for participating. Um, we hope you apply and we hope to get a great pool. And again, if there are any questions that you have, you can email me, the city clerk at swilliams at srcity.org. And I will be happy to forward your questions on to the appropriate board chair and staff liaison to get you an answer. Thank you for attending.